Welcome to the OT. I am Elise Jesse, and I am extremely proud and happy to introduce you guys to a Cincinnati native, um, Ryan Kelly. He played football at Lakota West under Larry Cox, went to Alabama, drafted by the Colts, and he is currently playing starting center. And now you get to come back to um, the city that claimed you, basically. we I, I do feel like working at Cincinnati so long that we claim you as one of our own for sure. Um <laughs> The first question I got to ask you, though, is how many people asked you for tickets to this game? I've known I know you've played the Bengals throughout your career since you were drafted, but I'm I've got to think that every time you come to Cincinnati, it's like everybody surrounds you in this city to try to spend a little bit of time with you and Emma. Yeah, it's really cool. I have a lot of friends from high school uh, who still live in the Tri-State area, and they you know big Bengals fans go to a lot of games, and obviously with the Bengals success the last couple of years. Uh, it's definitely doubled, uh, but it's pretty cool that, you know, that they'll all be there, uh, you know, rooting for me, uh, rooting for the Bengals. And um, it's always special coming home. You know, we used to play that four preseason game in Cincinnati quite often. And I always thought it was kind of a cool com- uh, homecoming game, even though I, you know, I really rarely would ever play that game. But um, just being there and, you know, I, I grew up a Bengals fan. Corey Dillon was like my first yeah. jersey I ever had uh, to come back and then to play in that stadium is pretty amazing. And, um certainly all of our family being in cincinnati still just it, it's i just love it i mean i um actually brought in a couple rolls of getta to the uh to our staff look uh, at you our, yeah to our uh, kitchen staff a couple days ago and i said hey if you guys want to cook this up for the uh the week let's fire it up and so uh I, i'm i'm the biggest cincinnati guy in indianapolis there's no doubt about it so well and emma your wife is from cincinnati as well do you do you guys sure. eat some skyline after the game or do anything like that like so there's a there's one skyline close to our house and it's just not the same like when you cross over the when you cross over the border on 74 once you start getting into ohio it just tastes different when you're back there so we uh we tried it years ago um but no we, we savor that moment for when we go back so we'll hit the we'll hit skyline with we'll la rosa's graders and then we'll pop out or udf or something like that so that's kind of our that's our trifecta and then we hit home so it's, that's a good that's a good weekend for me if we can do that in the off season I love it. That's that. That sounds like a perfect w- weekend, especially with eating. I mean, graders, they just built one across my house, uh, across the street from my house. So I'm super excited about that. But, um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy about it. Um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Colts season, because like the Bengals, I, the Colts have faced uh, their fair share of adversity so far this year. I mean, drafting Anthony Richardson, um, in the first round, expecting him to be your quarterback. And then he suffers an injury to a shoulder, has season ending um, surgery. What was, I mean, what was that moment like? Because now you're relying on Gardner Minshew, who I think is quite a character all by himself. Um, what was that moment like for you guys as a team, knowing that the guy that you were relying on is not able to go out there and perform? And now you have to turn to Gardner. I think in any just being in this league for so long, uh, there's always going to be adversity. I mean, there's there's you're never the perfect season where everybody stays healthy. It's just the reality of the business. But uh, I think I talk to the local media here quite often about it. Is uh, you know, like you know, the the Gardner Minshew, you know, he gets a lot of questions. The hair, the persona, you know, um, but a lot of people don't see is when he got here in April, uh, before we drafted Anthony, before the quarterback situation um, would play out. I mean, he, he truly came in. And there's a reason that he's been in the league this long is because he's a veteran. Uh, he prepares hard. He loves his guys. Um, he just has that competitor's mentality where it doesn't matter the play. Does the, the perfect defense doesn't matter. Uh, he's going to go out there and get the guys to go play hard. And he's going to play hard himself. He's going to be prepared. What was your first impression of his of him personally? Like, what is his personality like? Because I've got to think with the hair and the stash and all that, he's got to have a pretty funny personality working. Yeah, I mean, he's just he's a hard person to pin down as to put you what you want to bucket you want to put him in. But uh, I mean, he's got the Jethro Tull, like to you know Matthew McConaughey, Days and Confused kind of vibe. But then he also, I mean, he works his ass off in the weight room, and uh, he's super competitive. So uh, he's a blend of a bunch of different places. And I think you know he, he played different. He played college a couple of different places. I think he took a a little bit of that wherever he went, and uh, he's he's a perfect blend of. Uh, all, all the things you would want in a quarterback and just interesting guy, but I uh, love him to death. What does it say about this team to start out three and four, lose your starting quarterback, and now be in a position where 
you are playing for a playoff spot. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's what you want as a competitor. I mean, you want to play football that means something in November, December. I've been on teams where it didn't. You know, last year certainly one of those. And uh, it's a it's an ominous feeling coming to work every day, knowing the team's going to be different, um, knowing that there's no chance of playoffs, no chance of being like, I mean, this is a – you know, you only get so many years in this league and, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to waste one, right? So I think that that's amazing that this team has overcome so much adversity um, – and, you know, look at some of the games that we've played in that have been close. I mean, our, you know, you can always say, you know, your record can be better, right? And I think that this team feels that. And we never feel like we're out of the fight, no matter if we're down in the fourth quarter or if it's going to go into overtime to get a win in Tennessee. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is truly like a, a team. And that locker room is, is so tight-knit. A lot of the same guys as last year. But I think when Shane came in from day one, you know, he had some expectations from us. The accountability factor, you know, we're going to have fun, but we're going to execute. And I think if you bring all all three of those things together as a team, uh, it can be very dangerous in, De- in December. But, uh, you know, this is the thing about the NFL. You got to prove it every single week. doesn't matter what you did last week. No one cares. Uh, it's all about this week. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your your out of football life, um, Emma. And you went through an extremely tough time a couple of years ago with um, your daughter being delivered prematurely at 19 weeks, I believe she was. I truly think that you have helped so many people who have also endured um, a similar situations that you guys have had to go through. What was that like and what what kind of view did you now have about um, Emma after going through um, something like losing a child? Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, it still is the the hardest time. I mean, I, I you know, I can't see a guy with a daughter. You know, it doesn't matter if she's one or if she's ten, right? Um, yeah. Emma's Emma's two sisters were also pregnant at the same time. Uh, one of them she knew, the other one she didn't know. Uh, so when we found that out, right, like those, yeah. Whenever we see those kids, it's a constant reminder of where how old our daughter would be. Um, so that's like that's a that's a daily tough thing to swallow, right? But that's just yeah. the reality of it. Um, but Kind of a couple things happened when that happened. We had HBO Hard Knocks following the the, the Colts that year, mm-hmm. um, and ultimately that was kind of a blessing in disguise because we were. I mean, they were there when we did the gender reveal uh, mm-hmm. with Mark Lewinsky. They were all. He was actually our neighbor at the time. Uh, played right guard for us for a couple of years. We were really close. Um, still are. And then you know ultimately, you know the 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 nightmare of that happens, right? And um, mm-hmm. I never thought twice about coming back to work. I mean, it just whatever I could do. To heal myself. I mean, I, I was crushed too, as much as Emma was. Um, and then, you know, from the Ursa family calling, you know, to, can we pick anybody up? Can we need to bring anything to you guys? I mean, we had so much help. Uh, but at the end of the day, like nothing was going to bring our daughter back. And so um, finished out that year, just hard. It's so hard to come back to work after that. I was in a really bad place for a long time after that because I, you know, I can't lean on Emma because she needs me. Right. And that would be the the stable rock in the, in the family. But when you're also hurting yourself, uh, it's really tough. So, um, you know, I think Emma and I, you know, we certainly had our ups and downs during that period and we had a lot of help along the way. And then as I circle back to the HBO thing, um, you know, I was out for the game. We, we released a statement and kind of showed some photos of, uh, just to tell people what was going on. So we could just answer it once and be done with it. Right. But what spawned out of that was the, uh, the outpouring, messages that we got from random people i mean i think our story went you know public pretty pretty uh heavy of people and e-news and um we never anticipated that or that's, that wasn't the reason we did it but you know we 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 heard from people who have been harboring you know a lot of heartache for 20 30 years never told anybody about you know delivering their baby stillborn um and that ultimately like kind of healed us at the same time because we heard other people's stories and you can see physically when they're telling you this story live that, you know, there's a weight lifted off their shoulders that they're not alone. And it does happen a lot. You know, everybody wants to see the the little bows on the girls when they come out of the hospital, but uh, it's a pretty damn empty feeling when you're leaving that hospital, just a, a care box. We're in a much better place now, you know, after, uh, you know, trusting God, trusting this plan for us. And, and now we have two healthy baby boys. You guys had Duke and Ford, your twin boys um, in Nashville it was, you said it was 27 weeks. Yep, um, well, you, they had to spend 90 days in the NICU in a city that was not obviously Indianapolis. You guys didn't live in Nashville. Yep. 
Will you take me through just that time of your lives? Obviously, you're excited because you have your babies, but you're also like praying every day, I'm sure, that they're okay and that one day you'll be able to take them home. Yeah, uh, I'll just give you just the fastest summary I can. But we were there for a wedding. Um, Emma goes and she thinks she's having a contraction. So before this, she had actually, um, because of what had happened to us, wherever we went to a city, she always tried to find the closest NICU to there. Um, or it was some a level that, you know, that had a great hospital for that. So sure enough, it was like five minutes from the, where we were staying at. And so she goes in, they're like, Hey, um, you might be in preterm labor. You might not, we're going to hold you here for a while and just see. And maybe if you are, we have enough time to get you back to Indianapolis where you can deliver, uh, maybe in a day, two days, four weeks, doesn't matter. We don't know. So sure enough, four days goes by and the boys are coming. So we have to... Granted, this time all we have is two bags that we packed for a wedding. Um, our dogs are still back at Cincinnati with our family. So we deliver the boys on a Tuesday. I drive back to Indy on a Friday. I got some clothes, came back down, tried to find an Airbnb close to the house uh, or close to the airport for three months in Nashville, which is impossible to find, but we found it. And it's just funny how the whole, you know, the whole world works out. I mean, it just always turns out that way. And we had... Um, an incredible amount of help from the NFL community. I mean, I trained at George Kittle's gym in Nashville uh, for wow. the entire off season. You know, every day we would, I would go work out. We'd go to the hospital for hours. I mean, we were there all day, right? And at the first, there's not a whole lot you can do because they're, you know, they're in the incubators and you know, they've got wires and they're, you know, then, and there's a checklist of say 20 things that they need to do before they can finally graduate. Um, and there's, you know, there might be two steps, forward and there might be a couple steps back it just kind of depends and um we really had the best care there i mean the boys did amazing and every small medical battle that they had i mean even the big ones too that you know a lot of people don't know about they uh they overcame them and it was it was incredible but uh definitely some really stressful times in my life it sounds like your boys are fighters and i'm not surprised because you and your wife emma are clear resilient fighters day in and day out um I had one more question for you, and it was about Count the Kicks. Um, it's a free app that people can download, and I know that you and Emma are huge proponents um, of this company. And I don't think I need to ask you why, um, but I did want to know how you guys kind of got started with um, just kind of telling people about this company and why they're so important. Count the Kicks is really amazing. Uh, the um Research and, and doctor-based app basically um, helps women in the third trimester count the kicks. Is you know counting the baby's movements and kicks can ultimately be the biggest determination on if something's wrong. So if your baby counts, if they kick 30 times in an hour and now they're down to 15, then you know why, right? And it's an app that you get on your phone and you can click through the app. You know, there's a big button, you just hit one, two, three, right? And it kind of builds you a formula. It kind of builds you a an average of what you're going to expect. Um, you know, ever, Count the Kicks, you know, heard these stories and the, the women and the men that founded Count the Kicks, mostly women, um, were all women who lost their baby in the third trimester. So they, they all got together and they found a way to help. And so they've, they've gone over 50 something countries. Maybe that's too low. Wow. I can't remember. Maybe more than that. Um, they're in women's prisons, uh, women's prisons obviously can't have technology, but they found a way to do it via pen and paper, which I think is amazing. Um, because the mortality rate, unfortunately, in prisons is very high for uh, pregnant women. Um, and ultimately, you know, they started hearing these stories, you know, when they were before they started of women who would, you know, they were supposed to induce on Monday, Saturday before that they lost their baby. Right. And then it was they either went to the hospital or didn't go or they, they thought they were overreacting. Um, mm -hmm. so their, their goal was to, is to make sure that nobody leaves the hospital uh, empty handed. And so I think that it's, it's an amazing cause. Um, it's free for the public. And so I believe that any woman um, or family who's in that third trimester, download it, become accustomed with it because uh, you know, it can be a difference between you bringing your baby home um, and having a beautiful family or not. So I think it's uh, it's truly amazing. And um, it took nothing for us to join in. And we obviously, Emma sits on the board now um, because of some of the work that they're doing. It's amazing with legislation um, for stillborns. Um, when it comes to birth certificates and, you know, something that we didn't get, I think it's just, yeah. it's, it's really amazing. And because a lot of the stories and what we see nowadays is, uh, nothing but the good stuff. And, uh, ultimately there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of potential bad things that can happen, uh, unfortunately. And so I think that the, you know, they're doing their best 
given their whole heart to help women and families uh, across the world. Well, Ryan, I, I appreciate your time so much. Um, huge fans of you and Emma, and I'm so glad that Duke and Ford are doing so well. Um, I, I can't wish you luck necessarily because you are on a Bengals <laughs> channel. Um, but I'm hoping for your health all season long. I hope you guys do make it into the playoffs and you have a, a great season. Um, and I, I will probably see you guys on Sunday. Awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate you.